The star of this piece is clearly the one-stringed bass instrument, which some have called Mr. Bassman. I call it the stick. There's actually a very cool real instrument out there called the Chapman stick. The most common model has 10 strings. And you play it by tapping your fingers on the strings, like this guy does, except, well, his fingers are metal mallets and he only has one finger on each hand. But anyway, on a stick, when you tap the string, it starts to vibrate at that note, and the vibration is picked up by an electronic pickup, similar to that on electric guitar, and then it's amplified. When people initially see the stick in this animation, usually first they laugh, and then they say it's cool, and after a few moments they ask, would that really happen? Would it really make a sound like that when the string was hit? Absolutely. And if you're not sure, get a friend's bass guitar, turn the amp up to 10, and hit a string with a hammer. You'll see. I actually wrote the music used for this animation, as, as well as the previous one, a few years ago, and I had no intention at the time of using either piece uh, to visualize with Anna Music. Although I'd been working with music animation since uh, about 1989, I hadn't done any stringed instruments yet. Uh, lots of drums and lasers and bouncy things, but no strings. So it seemed to be an insurmountable obstacle since you know this had a, a stick bass, uh, a guitar, a, a upright string bass, violas. Uh, the last piece, of course, had the triple neck electric guitar um, and the bass guitar. But when we added vibrating strings to the visual repertoire, it opened up all kinds of possibilities. And in fact, five of the seven pieces on this video album use stringed instruments to some extent. So anyway, in this case, uh, the music was written and produced literally years before the graphical objects were modeled and the motion algorithm supplied. This isn't always the case, and I'll point out some other pieces where we built the graphical instruments and stages before I'd written any final music at all. It actually can go either way, and I should probably explain a bit about that since I said earlier that the music drives the graphics. What I mean is this. Although the music drives the graphics, the music can be changed at any time up until the graphics is actually rendered, meaning the frame is generated by the computer. Remember that animation consists of a series of static images shown in rapid succession, in this case about 30 frames a second. So, we can model instruments, build stages, rig the lighting, even set up some cameras before finalizing the music. What we sometimes do um, is we just have test music that exercises the instruments by like playing through some scales that might go through their whole note range or uh, hitting chords, trying long and short note durations, loud and quiet, whatever, just to see how things are working and kind of verify that the graphical instrument is behaving in the way that we want it to as it's being triggered by the note data. Then at the last minute, before the final render actually starts, we can throw a yeah, a whole other piece of music at it if we want, and it automatically animates the instrument objects uh, according to the new note data and renders the animation. Now, there's some constraints to this process, of course. Uh, the assumption is that we're um, giving it music on the same set of instruments as was used for the test or organized on the same uh, tracks uh, in the sequencer. Uh, um, and we're using the same range of notes that was used uh, in the test. Obviously, if, if we built a 24-note instrument and we played 27 different notes, the instrument would just ignore the top three, uh, so we have to be consistent here. A comment about these horns. Uh, horns obviously don't look like this. These horns are more like part of a pipe organ or a theater organ, really. In this case, you know, driven by air blowers under the stage, which you can't see. I'm just kind of telling you that they're there. Um, obviously, horns don't move like this either. Real horns don't squash and stretch when they play. So why do we do it here? It may be obvious, but I'll say it anyway. If we didn't, they wouldn't move at all. And that wouldn't be any fun. A lot of times we have to exaggerate, if not create something that's totally not there at all, in order to visualize a certain sound. What about lasers? What sound do real lasers make? 
I've seen a lot of lasers in labs and stuff, and they didn't seem to make much sound at all. But these lasers do. They're a special kind, I guess. <laughs>